is violating the rule of the Torah. Now I said, what is a demon? So the answer is, the Gemara speaks about demons. They are demons, they are spirits of people that died, they are angels. The Gemara said there are six different kinds of demons. Three like people and three like angels. What does it mean? Three are very spiritual, like angels, without a body. And three that has a body, a physical, into them. And they eat and they drink and they cause all kinds of problems to people. However, I want to relax you now. That those kind of demons which have negative power and the same thing evil eye and all the other spiritual sources in the world are very, very, very weak in our generation. Why? Because the level of the holiness went down tremendously in the world. We don't have people like Moshe Rabenu or people that you used to be in the time of the Tanaim that can revive the dead. Who can do such a thing? Right, so we don't have it. So basically because the level of the holiness and modesty and, uh, and spirituality in the world went down tremendously, Hashem always balanced the two sources. Ele keneged, ele bara Hashem. Also the impurity is much, much weaker. When Moshe Rabbein was the leader, Hashem gave the world Bilam. That purity and impurity are more or less balanced. Or when we had Chazal, the Chachamim, the Chachamim that were able to do all kinds of Kishufim and they knew the secrets of Kishufim, the Goim also had all kinds of Mekashfim. The Gemara say, the Rabbi went to the Mikveh and one of the Goim over there froze him, could not move. He got stuck by the door. Do you know today a Goy that can go into a pool and he see a Jew coming out and he's about to leave the, the, the pool room and all of a sudden the rabbi is frozen and say, hey, Vini, let him go. <laughs> Vini, so they give me a thousand dollars, I let him go. Froze him. The Gemara say that one Mekashef Goy, he froze the rabbi there. There were three other rabbis there in a the mikveh and they froze him. And they told him, you release him, we'll release you. This is, this is amazing. You're reading a document that was written by the holiest people in history, the most reliable people in history, and it's not one or two. We're talking hundreds of hundreds. It cannot be a conspiracy that all the rabbis in the world got together to make up such a lie and write baloney and fairy tales, obviously. Especially if they would do such thing, the ordinary people that would read it would lose any faith in them. If you have your rabbi, which is a very, very big scholar that wrote books and is very, very knowledgeable, and now you begin to see that he writes all kinds of lies, fairy tales. Last night I flew, I flew from here to Hawaii, I checked the area, and then I flew, I just landed here in Brooklyn, I'm giving you the lecture. <laughs> what would happen? All the followers that he has, slowly, slowly, would disappear. Not all. Some people like fairy tales. That's why they stand on lines by the babot. <laughs> it's not. There is mazal, but Israel is above the mazal, which means one good action of a Jew can overcome his mazal, his fortune. Many Gemaras have talked about a certain person is very poor. And I heard this question on Shabbat, and the Shabbat tells them five would uh, make you rich, I would have to change the whole world. Basically, you're born, you can save them. Is that true? And that's a... What well, you say, you know, I said many times, if you don't... Somebody born in a poverty fortune, somebody is born in a sign of poverty, that's most likely most of his life will be in poverty. There's reasons for it. It's no coincidence. So Same person in his next life or in his previous life was rich. Now it's time for him to be poor because Hashem tests the person in different situations. Not all his reincarnation is going to be rich, and not all, in all of his reincarnations they will be poor, obviously. So therefore, it's good for his test. What's the whole point? Point, the person wants to force Hashem to make him rich. Force him, but it's not good for him. Praise day and night, I want to be rich, I want to be rich. Eventually Hashem would listen to him, and it will mess up his life. You understand? But... Even though it's already determined for the life of a person overall, when he was born, that it will affect his entire life, we can still do things that overcome this decree 
even not so much, but it's overcoming the regular fortune that we are set to live in. So there's nothing to be afraid today of demons, as I explained to you. They don't have the power they had in the time of the Chachamim. Some people uh, pay attention to things that are not so effective anymore in today's world. And uh, because of that, you know, it puts them under more pressure than the necessary. We already have tons of pressures out there. Let's not add more to that. <laughs>